Okay, before before I forget. Recorded. So I'm going to try and get you to understand the course, look yeah. at the demonstration of the platform. We look at how feedback and assessment is done. There are no exams, but obviously assignments, which is following a yeah. consultative approach. And then uh, what we'll also do is I'll mention key uh, staff, which will be obviously uh, people who will get in touch with, with you from time to time. And then yeah. any question and answers uh, plenty of questions. If I have, uh, then you know I'll be. It'll be good because it'll con make you confident to be able to follow the course with us. Sure. So first of all, thank you for choosing us uh, to study this qualification. I have gone through briefly your CV, and uh, you have a bachelor's degree, so you are yeah. absolutely fine to be able to do this course. So from a point of view of your eligibility, you absolutely meet the criteria, and okay. uh, it is a course which is quite popular. Um, you know, it, it's a course which is let's put it this way, it's an evergreen course. It is quite popular nowadays because of the COVID uh, and obviously um, healthcare sector in general, because yeah. one fifth of our spending in the economy is primarily on national health service and healthcare sector and services. So right. this is a course that we have about maybe 100, 150 students across the year. We don't okay. use the term students, we use learners because most of them are professionals. They're working. <laughs> Only life. Some of them have kids. They are running their own businesses. And sure. I, you know, it's a case wherein uh, most of them are doing it for the purposes of professional development. Yeah. Uh, maybe for looking at making, uh, or say, for example, meeting needs and requirements uh, from a work perspective, or maybe for looking at, uh, you know, career progression and things like that. Yeah. Now, let me start with the, you know, the Moodle uh, demonstration. So. Yep. Um, obviously, there are two bits which I want to quickly clarify, not that it is going to be of any difference in terms of approach, although when we advertise courses on read, uh, you know, they are slightly lower in terms of its fee structure and pricing, and they tend mm -hmm. to be what are called distance learning and courses which will which the learners will follow through. Uh, on their own course. We give access to the platform and obviously, you know, you're on your own and then you get in touch with us during assessments and finally right. process of uh, verification and certification. But uh, we, we don't mind this approach um, and we don't follow this, although we advertise it uh, as a differentiator, but you are going to get tutorials from us. You're going to study the course live with us because we have about eight or nine learners which are actively studying this course. So if you join... Yeah for interactions and obviously for you to also follow through the course and complete it um, confidently and maybe a bit earlier because if you're left on your own you know sometimes it makes it difficult for you to yeah. know how to take about and uh, go about studying the course yeah of course first of all what i'll do is i'll quickly start with a bit of an introduction on the platform yeah uh, I say this is because everything that we are going to show you today is going to come from the platform and um, this is going to be pretty much more or less the center of your universe when you're studying the qualification with us. So sure. if I look at uh, this particular uh, web address, which is a subdomain on our website, LMS, Learner Management System, and you see a lock, if you can drag that lock to your, you know, favorites uh, or yeah. your bookmark bar, it'll help you, you know, essentially click yeah, uh, and then get onto the site pretty much straight away. Now your username is in lowercase and you put your password that you've uh, created after you put in the first password to get entry to the system and you click on this green button, it will log you in into the system. Yeah. Now, should you ever forget how to reset your password or you want a password reset to be done, then on the homepage itself, there are two videos that we've created, one primarily in detail, which basically talks about how to go about resetting uh, you know, your password. And this is primarily here. Yeah, great. So there are a couple of things which the system doesn't like, and this has been done on purposes because if I click here, as you can see, there are lots of usernames. Mm -hmm. because it's a common uh, you know, Mac that we use in the office for the inductions. So sure. it doesn't like cookies and it obviously doesn't like multiple people sharing usernames and obviously logging in. So yeah. sometimes it's going to be a case of clearing the cache, deleting all the username or say passwords and then logging in. But because if it's your own laptop and PC and you're- Yeah, no it, one else uses this. It won't, make, it won't make a difference. Correct. Now, you can also set this up. There's a small video here. You can set this up on your phone or your mm -hmm. uh, tablet and you have access to all the learning and teaching material on a go, but obviously, although on a smaller screen, so if I make this yeah, small, this is going to be a mobile phone uh, yeah. or a tablet, and it takes only 
30 seconds to set up the app and should you say for example when you're traveling you're out and about you're in the tube or you know um on a holiday and if you do want to take the course along with you it allows you to have the full access to the course through this app it's a free yeah. application which you can download uh you know from the iphone store or yeah. ios or the google play store you will need to put the address down for the moodle once it okay. detects it your username and password and you're enrolled in that course and it will give you access to it pretty much straight away. All right, cool. The advantage of having this installed on your end uh, would be uh, uh, two things. One, we will be able to push you notifications because on the smartphone, on the tablet, you're able to put yeah. these, uh, push these notifications subtly in terms of assignment deadlines, calendar sharing, and those mm -hmm. are the bits that we can do through the app. But apart from that, I think pretty much it is just a hands-on uh, tool which is going to be useful should you need to refer to the course and the course content at any given point in time on a different yep. screen than your laptop. Sure. Now, apart from this, uh, the logging into the system is pretty straightforward. Putting in your username and password, you log in, you go on to a dashboard. I'm logged in as an administrator because I want to show you the entire system. So yeah. in your side, when you log in, you're going to be able to see just the one tile, which is yeah. your course tile. And there are two displays of that. One, for the first time, it will show you as a course overview. And once you've clicked on it, it will then show it on the recently accessed courses as well. Right. This okay. is that if you do come back and do other courses with us, you will have these courses building on as a library on your side. And uh -huh. the other bit would be that this bit, when you start accessing the course material, starts to also keep a bit of a tab on your progress, things that you have accessed. It is a very, let's say, numero uno system, uh, okay. literal a system in a sense that it only will keep tab because if you click a document, it says that, okay, you open this document and but that could be a document that you'll open 10 times, but it'll mark it as something which is a task complete. So it oh, gives okay. a bit of a, uh, let's say, a rudimentary uh, status on how much of your course is complete when it shows you a progress bar here on the course yeah. itself. Now, you can go through this tab or you can go through the menu, obviously, and um, your course that you've chosen is the ATHE Level 5 yeah. Social Care Management. That's the short form of it. And when you click on this, it will take you to the course page. Now, when you're on the course page, there are two sections to this particular course. This bit that you see here is going to be a generic section, which is called the pre-induction section for the course. That means things and information which are related to the course, you might use it initially, but once you've gone through it, you might not use them uh, going forward because you'll okay. be dipping into the units for uh, or the modules to be able to study. Okay. Now, we are going to look at some of the documents here very briefly. One is the course handbook. I'm mm -hmm. also going to look at uh, pointing out, uh, you know, certain important things which you might need in the next coming weeks, which is things sure. like about referencing, command verbs, and obviously some of the videos which are going to be useful videos. You know, the YouTube shots that we look at, the Instagram yes. short videos that we look at. Sometimes you only need a few clues to be able to see how to do it. And that's where some of these videos have been created, uh, which will allow you to understand uh, and, you know, obviously look at using them when you do your assignments. Okay, great. Uh, apart, apart from that, when I go down, we are doing a live induction. There's a link, which is a generic video induction, which is obviously, uh, you know, available for you to mm -hmm. watch for the system. But... What, we, what, what I thought was it will be better off because you're doing a health and social care course. It will be better off doing a live induction so that we take you through the course content that you're yeah. going to study rather than look at something generically. Yeah, fine. And then what we look at is underneath that particular section, you have the units that you're going to be studying. Now, some okay. of the units are generally hidden. Some of the units are generally open. The reason uh, this is the case is because what when we teach a particular unit you will see the unit being encircled around a yellow box that yeah. would mean that this is a unit which is currently being delivered live and this is the unit that you'll have uh, pretty much full access to seminars uh, which will be uh, zoom meetings or seminars which are being conducted and you'll have a schedule for this available from marvis okay now when you complete that unit, that unit, obviously, and you submit the assignment and that unit is graded or, you know, it is adjusted as a pass unit, then that unit will auto hide. And should you wish to go back to the unit, all you have to do is request Marvis and that unit should be made available uh, if you need to revisit that for, say, cross yeah. or any other, uh, you know, purposes. Now, as of now, the unit structure that you see on the page is basically a headline list or a headline or a list. 
but that does not mean that the course content is not there. So when I click on any particular unit, say this unit, uh, yeah. it will take you into the unit and show you all the content which is there uh -huh. for this unit to be studied. Now, okay. There is a set specific way in which these are organized. So if I very briefly mention to you uh, the structure in which uh, and how this content is arranged is pretty much going to be the same. The first, there are a few types of documents. You will see PDF documents. You're going to see Microsoft Word documents, yeah. Excel, in some cases, PowerPoint. And then there'll be some documents which will take you uh, either to external websites or there'll be links to the YouTube channel that we have, um, mm -hmm. wherein we have lots of other different types of videos related to some of the course content that you would uh, want to refer to. Yeah. So four broad types and the arrangement tends to be the first document is always going to be what is called the unit specification. And that will yeah. be this particular structure will be across any unit that you go in and study and, and you know, obviously click on. The unit specification is something which the awarding body creates, and we use this specification to make presentations and obviously teach and deliver the content when we are doing live uh, Zoom meetings or Zoom yeah. seminars. Now, any particular unit that you look at is going to be covered depending on the number of learning outcomes. So in this unit, just as an example, in the unit specification research project, there mm -hmm. are four learning outcomes, as you can see. So it yeah. is called LOs and ACs. Okay. So there are four learning outcomes. So for this unit, we're going to cover in five sessions. The four will sessions will cover each of the learning outcomes. And the yep. fifth session is going to be a discussion on the assignment brief and how to put together uh, an evidence in the Word document or in a PowerPoint presentation to be submitted for, you know, achieving a pass grade on this unit. Okay, yeah, sure. The second document that you will always see, sometimes this gets moved around depending on where the assignment discussion is happening, but it's generally going to be the assignment brief. And okay. this is the assignment brief, which is issued by the awarding organization. And uh -huh. at some stage, when you've covered the unit, you're going to be looking at going through the tasks. And these tasks are then going to be, you know, attempted as question and answer sessions in your Word document. Now, okay. assignments tend to have a bit of a scenario or a context. And when you look at that context, it will allow you to then get into the task and obviously create or present the evidence as it is required. Generally speaking, the number of tasks tend to be equal to the number of learning outcomes because they will okay. tally to the assessment criteria. So task one, if I look at there are four uh, tasks, task two, there are um, only there is only one task three, a couple of them and task four, only one. Okay. And they will comply and, you know, relate to the assessment criteria given on the unit specification, as you can see. Oh, here. yes. Is that okay? Now, yep. sometimes when I do the assignment, uh, if I want to do it uh, meticulously and methodically by following, uh, you know, the task criteria given here, and I don't want to, want to follow the context given in the assignment brief, some learners prefer to do it from here because to a certain extent, it also tells you as a cheat sheet, what is to be attempted in the assignment. So if I look at 1.1, for example, and I go down to the indicative content, you would generally see all the assessment criteria will have a broad heading. So if it talks about formulate and record possible research project outline specification, this tells you what is a project outline specification. So okay. it's like a bit of a cheat sheet, you know, sometimes it's difficult to go through a presentation and assignment. Yeah and also a unit specification open to see, okay, what is to be done in this task? Hang on, I, I can't relate to. So mm. some learners find it easier to do it from here and some learners find it easy to do it from the Word document. Sure. Now, just a tip here, um, which I want to mention, is always best to do the assignment from the assignment brief because right. in the assignment brief, it is going to give you some sort of a statutory word limit or a recommended word limit it is going to simplify the task down so that you don't need to replicate everything that you have studied in the unit. Okay, the great. idea of submitting the assignment is that we want to test the knowledge and the skills that you have gained from studying this unit rather than you memorizing and then replicating everything in the assignment. Yeah. Is that okay? So yeah, makes sense. That would be the case that we go forward and that's one of the reasons I'll, what we do is discuss the assignment after the delivery of the learning outcomes is complete. Okay. Now, after these two documents, you'll generally have books which are recommended by the awarding body. Now, they are not going to be just any books. These are traditional academic books, which are three, four, five, six hundred pages long. Okay. Sometimes it is best to ask the lecturers and the course coordinator to 
check on what chapters to read because the way awarding bodies look at is they have to give you some recommendations of articles, journals, and books to read. We have mm -hmm. gone ahead as a center or as a uh, as a approved college to buy everything, but right. generally speaking, you might not be required to read everything in the book which is given. And oh, okay, sure. As an example or as a benchmark, we normally have two or three books that we have bought for at least all the units. So you will not be short of books. We have in our library about four mm -hmm. and a half, 5,000 books. Oh, wow. There are about 10,000 articles and journals. So should you need anything specific, you send an email to Marvis and yeah. that should be uploaded to the Moodle for you to access in a couple of minutes uh, just after your mail is received. Perfect. So there is no need to go outside our system because everything that you need is going to be provided by us. Some of them we upload extracts and some of them we upload, say for example, now I'm doing another delivery of this particular uh, unit. And if I show you the presentations, they are broken down into learning outcomes. Uh, they are yeah. going to be quite worded because what we want to do is when you go through our presentations, you're going to get 90, 95% of the knowledge from the presentation itself. Perfect. And for five or 10%, there'll be associated articles, handouts, or certain chapters of the book that we will recommend you to study. And okay. most of these presentations will be a combination of, uh, you know, covering and, you know, signposting the assessment criteria so that you mm -hmm. are slightly doing a bit of directive study with us. It is not a university lecture style study because uh, what uh, they do is they come in to do a lecture and they say, okay, now you go and do your own research. But right. we are going to be relating it to individual learning outcomes and assessment criteria very clearly. And each of these presentations are refreshed, uh, you know, as and when the qualification is refreshed. So they are not made once and then used again. These versions that you're looking at, sometimes when you have multiple copies of presentations available, you will see that it will mention the word new next to it or 2020 yeah. or 2021 next to it. But that means they have been refreshed or maybe the delivery has been done by a different lecturer. And in oh, this okay. case, the presentation slides are slightly different. Great, that sounds good. So if I look at the structure of the unit and how it is presented, you have unit specification, assignment brief, some articles, reference books, which are recommended. And then you have the presentations. Some presentations will also have what are called some handouts underneath. Okay. And they would be because sometimes it's very difficult for us to cover everything in the presentation. And rather than we present those as a worded uh, PowerPoint presentation document, what we'll do is summarize that and give it to you as a document for you to do some additional reading. So if I just quickly share my screen, this particular document that you see here that I've downloaded, which is under the yeah. Learning Outcome 2 Research Onion, is about a 13 page handout. Uh, and that is what I would suggest that you need to go ahead and read because okay. this will help you crystallize what has been presented uh, or given across in the presentation uh, in a couple of slides, because there's no point okay. in me duplicating and copying and pasting that stuff into a presentation yeah, of course. when it can be given to you as a handout uh, for you to read. Lovely. Now, after this, towards the end, sometimes we, not sometimes, we do what is called an assignment discussion. And the assignment discussion is going to break down the assignment brief into easily understandable tasks. So there are some mm -hmm. tips which are given in terms of how to assess and how to go about doing the assignment. And obviously those are the bits which we will discuss in the assignment discussion session. And they would be helpful for you to understand and de you know, like deconstructing the assignment we've given mm -hmm. and then telling you exactly what needs to be done as far as attempting those tasks are concerned for the purposes of uh, achieving this unit comfortably. Now, if I just briefly go back, and then show you the structure of, uh, say, for example, the uh, other units, exactly going to be the same. So when you're on this particular um, program again, the navigation moves to the bottom when you're in units. If you want to go back to that list side of the page or headings, click on the breadcrumbs on the top, and that will take you back to the whole page, which will show you all the units. And if you want to dip into any particular unit, you click on it, and it'll have the same structure, unit specification, assignment, some yes. books, any other learning outcomes. In some cases, we have also appended what are called recorded uh, lectures. Now, these recordings of lectures, when you click, will be audio visual recording of lectures, and they will basically take you through that particular presentation uh, or that learning outcome, which has been discussed. And that is what you can watch rather than read the presentation separately and then go back to the lecture. So they are okay. audio visual in nature, 
and when it is being delivered we are not talking or uh, you know reading through the slides somebody who's delivering this lecture would be the fountain of knowledge and they would discuss a lot of examples the indicative content and obviously all the bits which are given uh, related to the structure of that unit is going to be covered in that particular lecture now should you wish to go and see some of the other uh, lectures as well mm -hmm. there are lots of them and from time to time we do upload lectures onto our youtube channel this is something we would want you to go in and subscribe obviously it helps us increase our subscribers but yeah. uh, and it's a straightforward link you click on youtube.com forward slash uk university online now yeah. there are about three and a half thousand videos uh, that we have uploaded here but, uh, so it's easier to find them through the playlists so if yeah. i go into health care management and as you would see if there is a latest series of lecture which has been uploaded you would see those lectures pretty much up coming up one after the other because they are oh, predominantly yeah. for that particular uh, you know, um, a course that you're studying. But mm -hmm. there are loads of videos that we have created and obviously we keep uploading two, three, four every day depending on the number of lectures which are happening. Oh, and okay. you be able to watch these at your own pace to get additional delivery or additional, uh, you know, aspects of how the uh, course is being run. Yep. Now, this particular layout would typically go through across the units. Now, okay. if you find a unit is hidden for quite some time and you're not able to access it, you would need to send an email to Mavis. And mm -hmm. the reason that unit might be hidden in some cases is because one, the unit could be updated in the background, is being updated in terms of either uh, okay. or resource. But generally speaking, they should be all visible to you when you start the course and uh, we will give you and discuss a study plan with you. Okay, well. yep. Okay. Sounds good. So that's what the system is all about. Very briefly, uh, what yep. you see is what you get. It is something which is clickable. Um, when you click on certain Microsoft Office documents, they will always download to your local machine because yep. the system tries to prevent any uploads. So obviously, most of them are going to be PDF, but mm -hmm. a small majority of the documents are going to be, you know, documents which will take you to websites, YouTube channel, and also Word documents predominantly, which will be templates that you are going to reuse or use them while you are doing your assessments. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Good stuff. So that's the first bit, which is the modal demonstration. Now let's look at diving into a bit of course overview. Okay. Yeah. Now, the course that you're doing is a course which is uh, recommended uh, by CQC, somebody who's going to be working in compliance, managing quality and quality related processes. So yes. this tends to be more or less like a highest level of qualification if you're working in some sort of a health and social care setup, a care home, a nursing home, an old age home, a children's uh, nursery, nursery. you're an early years practitioner, you're working in a clinic, uh, or you know, any sort of facility which is basically related to and in general falls within the health and social care services, mental health care services. This is that this is this particular course which most people handling compliance and quality side of things need to do as per CQC guidelines. Yep. We generally have learners who are doing level three and fours more often, but level five generally tends to be for that particular reason. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you're doing it uh, for this reason as well? Yeah, exactly that. Um, I'm taking over the compliance management role and the CQC registration. So, okay. That's great. So you're doing the right course. And obviously, this particular qualification is quite well, uh, let's put it this way, established in the market. You yep. are able to also look at progressing further should you wish to do, I know you have a bachelor's degree already, but should you wish to do a health and social care management or get into nursing, mm -hmm. this will be allowing you to get exemptions into either of these courses should you want to do any progression in the future. Okay, cool. Now, the qualification has been in existence since 2012, and uh, the last word revision of this qualification was done in 2018. That's okay. version 2.2. So this is after that. I don't think there are any more revisions which have happened. There might be some cosmetic revisions, as we call it, some changes of unit specification somewhere, but pretty much the qualification in general has mm -hmm. been overall the same. Now, there are bits and pieces in the course handbook which are going to be useful. You are doing the extended diploma. Yes. Which is primarily eight units, the full 120 credits, which is a one year qualification. And that's the off call qualification code, uh, should you wish to refer it to at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. Now, 
apart from this, um, you met the entry criteria. I won't go through all the pages, but this gives you an idea in terms of why this qualification was created. And, you know, obviously one of the reasons is people working in the health and social care sector, the mental health services would yeah. need to know uh, about the standards, the laws, legislations, and yes. the best practices which have been, uh, you know, which are required to be known to be able to, you know, obviously work within the sector and provide services to clients and patients. Mm -hmm. Now, the bit which is important for us is this particular page, which is page 10. This basically okay. gives you a snapshot of the units that you're going to be able to study with us. Now, oh, yeah. this qualification has some mandatory units, which yeah. everybody has to study. And in the optionals, you can then pick and choose the units that you want to, you know, obviously study sometimes it's a case of these units being more related to your work workplace sometimes yeah. it could be more related to because you have prior knowledge in them and you want to get through the qualification earlier or easier and sometimes it could be because people want to progress and look at uh, building credits to going to a new qualification and that is where they will pick up some of the synergy units that they feel they would need to study now sure. From our point of view, when we look at this qualification uh, from a CQC perspective and from a university progression uh, perspective, there are some units that we have essentially looked at and are, those are the ones that we normally go ahead and teach because they are the units you have to have knowledge of if you're working within this sector. Now, some of the optional units that we teach, one is working within multidisciplinary teams. Yeah. Because within this sector, you can't do away with, uh, you know, you can't work in silos. You have to work with different vendors, partners, mm -hmm. suppliers. So obviously working in multidisciplinary teams is an important unit. Yeah. The other important unit that we look at in this sector is personal and professional development. Because there's a lot of development which happens, a lot of trainings that you go to. You have to look at undertaking trainings and develop your skills and be at the best of your game, you know, essentially when you're working. Yeah. So obviously this is an important unit. Now, apart from that, managing quality, people who are looking at managing compliance, they would be looking at implementation of quality policies and procedures. So obviously managing quality in health and social care is an important unit uh, uh -huh. from that perspective. Now, apart from that, we also look at then uh, this particular unit, which is leading practice in health and social care. Now, yeah. this particular unit is focused on understanding if you were to set up or if you were to work in uh, a health and social care sector business, then how would you be setting up this practice, leading the best practices, understanding the law and legislation, which is given out by the Department of Health, and mm -hmm. then implementing them to the needs and uh, you know requirements of your organization. So these tend to be the four units that we end up uh, picking out from optionals, which would be giving you a total of 120, 125 credits. So if I look at this, which is 45 credits and 20, which is the project, which is 65, you have uh, then 30 again here, which is 95. And then we pick another 15, which is 110. And then we look at uh, managing quality in health and social care. So you look at about 125 credits for the qualification. Okay. And these are the units that have been labeled out uh, obviously in the Moodle when you see the eight units yeah. uh, for access. Now, sometimes you have nested qualifications within the extended diploma. So in this qualification, there are three other qualifications. So you're doing the highest, Yeah. But, you know, because of extenuating circumstances, sometimes learners drop out, work pressures, things like that. Yeah. If you want to complete a certain units and get a certain certification, then you can also achieve a diploma and you can also achieve a certificate. Okay, now, cool. certificate is generally two units. Yeah. Right? And diploma is going to be 60 credits or four units. Yeah. So these are also given after page 10. So this is the extended one that you're doing. And then the next one shows diploma. So there are three mandatory units. The research one goes away. And then yeah. you choose just one optional unit to be able to do a diploma. And in certificate, you have just these uh, three units to do. But out of yeah. that, you do one from mandatory and one from optional to get a certificate. Yeah, okay, got that. Great. Now, that's the um, bit in terms of the unit structure. Now, there are no exams in this course. Yeah. Everything is going to be assessed through the assignment. Assignments tend to be a combination of case <laughs> study, in some cases, a PowerPoint and a Word document. And okay. they are going to be knowledge-based. So they are not competency-based that I don't need to come out to your workplace to observe you. Or oh, okay, yeah, lovely. So they are all going to be essentially knowledge-based. 
There is a bit okay. on plagiarism. When you do your assignments, we will check the plagiarism. It has to be less than 20%. That means yeah, of one fifth of your work can be copied. But as long as you reference it and you paraphrase it, that is all acceptable. And yeah. uh, the idea would be to try and also follow the guidelines in terms of Harvard referencing. Yeah. And then parts of the handbook after page 17 have been extracted out and they are uh, uploaded into Moodle as the unit specification for each of the units. Is that okay? Yeah, so oh, fine. If you, if you look at the course handbook at some stage, just to get a bit of background about the awarding organization, which is awards for training in higher education, the structure of the course and the unit structure and the specifications, we want to look at that at, in a glance in one document, then this is a handy document to look at at some stage. Yeah, now, perfect. The second bit, which I want to quickly mention um, and take you through is the process of, of uh, Harvard referencing and command works. Now for this, what I would need to do is obviously share and uh, you know basically open uh, the bigger screen because I would want to show you two or three documents and that is what is going to be uh, reflective of uh, when I show you, uh, you know, how assessment and feedback process works, how do you submit assignments, how do you do referencing and things like that. So yeah. Let me just share the full screen. So here, if I go back to the full screen now, so there are three documents which I will open. One is an assignment, which is just as an example, a learner submitted for this course. You have what is called, uh, um, let's put it this way, one other thing which I want to open is a front cover sheet, which is where the feedback would come from once the unit has been completed. And then I have the Moodle on the right-hand side and the notepad. Is that okay? Is that all visible? Yeah, so. Now, when you do submit assignments to us, where will you submit the assignments? The assignments come on to a monitored mailbox, which is called learnerwork at ukversity.co.uk. The first thing which happens is when you complete your unit and you create an assignment, which is a Word document, uh, as I'm showing you in this case, you would email this across learner work. When you send an email, you get an auto acknowledgement that the assignment has been received and you should get feedback in four to five working days from us. Now, once we receive the assignment, we do a plagiarism scan. That is something that we do at our end. So obviously you don't need to do it. Although in all word processors now, when you look at as a word document, there are uh, what is called plagiarism softwares which are built in. But yeah. generally, this is something which is a compliance need uh, at the organization's end. So what we do is we upload all the assignments when it come, they come in and we will scan the document to see if there is any similarity. Now, yeah. there is a traffic light system. If it is green, that means it is less than 20%. If it's amber, that means it is bordering uh, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still acceptable and red means it is over 20 percent and that is where the report will actually go back to you to say that you would need to paraphrase or reference the work and then send it back because this is unacceptable as far as what yeah. everybody so this bit is all done in the background when you send your work into learner work and okay. that's where the monitored mailbox actually works now when we get the assignment this is an assignment say for multidisciplinary teams as you can see yeah. Um, the learner has submitted the assignment, they've written the tasks down, and obviously they've followed through the task structure which is given. And what we do at our end is basically then give you comments on the right-hand side to see whether the oh, task okay. is meeting the criteria or not. Yep. This commented document will go back to you if we do feel that some bits have not been addressed. And in some cases, the assignment or the, the task which has been submitted is shy of uh, you know, some of the bits of material which needs to be added. So oh, okay, yeah. we give you absolutely everything as a directive comment to say, add this, change this, or amend this, or this is achieved. So that you know exactly what is to be done. And we don't want that university style system again, wherein you send an assignment, we check it, we say, okay, this is not meeting the criteria, go back and redo it, but don't tell you how, what is to be redone or rewritten. And then you are lost and then you come back again and it keeps going back and forth. So the idea is, at some stage, when you submit the assignment, you will have a 100% clear idea in terms of what is to be done because we have an assignment discussion session. But should we have a need to be able to refer this back to you because it is not hitting a criteria, then the comments are going to be quite clear and directive to the fact that you know exactly what is to be done. Okay, perfect. If you change anything on the document with regards to the comment being given, 
we always ask you to highlight them in, in yellow. Okay. The reason yeah. is that it's, it's easier for us to spot what was commented and what has been added, and then it allows us to turn that document around very quickly. And once yeah, okay. it's been done and the assignment has been achieved, then what we also give you is what is called a front cover sheet, which will basically confirm the achievement that you've met all the tasks. There are some commenting which has been done by the lecturer, and yeah. then uh, it will say it has been passed. The quality manager checks it and obviously uh, confirms that the decision of this unit is passed. And then in those cases, you keep this document, which is the front cover sheet, mm -hmm. and this document as a reference and a as a record at your end, and this is what is then put forward for certification when you do complete and achieve all the units. Okay, yeah. Is that okay? Now, yeah, if fine. We feel the plagiarism is higher, then what we do is we download this particular report, and this report, when it is downloaded, it is going to be sent back to you by one of my colleagues, Tanya, and she would essentially send this report back to you for you to look at, and when you open this report up, you'll exactly see in what places you have read uh, yeah. you know, which is basically, there is no referencing. So that is why it is coming up as plagiarism in what areas, if it's black, that means it's fine. If yeah. it's blue or green, that means it's been referenced. But in areas wherein it is surely purely showing as red, that means you will need to look at paraphrasing. And it gives you a visual way of quickly turning things around because yeah. we understand that, you know, uh, this is something which is going to be put together from different sources. And sometimes we forget to do referencing. And yeah. that would generally be the case. That's fine. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, if I open this particular document and show how referencing is to be done, because there are lots of different types of referencing systems. Yeah. So if I um, go to the referencing tab on the top and I drop down on the systems and choose Harvard Anglia. Mm -hmm. Now, in the UK education system, I think most universities, apart from a few use Harvard idea, some of them use APA, but all these referencing systems are built into Microsoft Word. Yeah. You can also use them in Google Docs. So when you click on Harvard Emilia, and assuming you were looking at defining, say the task was assuming the task was the role uh, or define the role of a compliance manager. Now, <clears throat> if I have to start writing about this, and what I would then do in this case is um, at some stage, look at maybe internet, uh, look at the Google, at some stage is going to our PowerPoint slides. But if I generally look at, um, you know, writing something like about the task, yeah. and if I'm copying it from somewhere, say, for example, if I put it this way, that um, say the role of, so give me one second. So the role of compliance manager is to, so is to, and I copy and paste from somewhere, is yep. to ensure, um, you know, that its employees projects comply with laws and regulations and things like that. Now, if I have taken this text from a website or a book and it is taken as it is, then what I would need to do is basically put this in inverted quotes. So yep. role of compliance manager, as I mentioned here, is uh, is defined as comma inverted quotes because what i've done is i've taken the text as it is without altering the meaning of the text and because mm -hmm. i've copied it as it is i need to include this in inverted quotes now yeah, what i need to do is also put a reference so how would i how would i do this i would go into clicking on the reference tab on the top and then click on insert citation when there's a window which opens up so if I show you the full screen, I don't think you'll see the pop-up window. Mm -hmm. So there's a window which opens up. When the yeah. window opens up, I will choose what is the source of the reference. So if I've taken this from, say, a website, I would normally put the name of the author. So in this yeah. case, for example, if I've taken the thing from the website, which is Go Construct, and just generally looking at uh, the role of a compliance manager, this mm -hmm. particular website URL, I'll put the URL here in which year. So you'll have to fish out, you know, some of the bits which are on on the website in terms of when it was published, who yep. has published this and things like that. So here, what I'm going to do is go construct. Sorry. Go construct name of the page is compliance manager. Mm -hmm. Now the year in which it was published was 2020. 
I'm accessing it in 2022. The month is 11 and today's date is 23rd November. Yeah. 23rd. Okay. Now, if I click OK, it will put a reference here, uh, yeah. which will say, sorry, I should have clicked on the uh, place where the reference is to be put. So this yeah. will put a reference here. Now, if I go about and read this paragraph and write it in my own words, then I would not need to put this in inverted quotes. Yeah, of course. But I will be doing what is called paraphrasing, but I will yeah. still put the reference in. Now, yeah. You follow this construct and go through, and then at towards the end of your assignment, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> towards the end of your assignment, if you look at um, clicking on the bibliography part, now assuming if I've paraphrased everything and I've uh, cited, I need to only cite the sources, <coughs> then I will look at bibliography. Uh -huh. But if I have used direct quotes, definitions, frameworks, things like that, then I'm going to use what is called works cited. So when I click on this, it'll bring it across automatically for you in a chronological order. Nice. And that would define bibliography. Great. <laughs> so this bit on referencing tends to be important because when you do your assignments, you want to do away with plagiarism and similarity. And that is where you look at doing the referencing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, if I take you back, if I take you back to Moodle now, there is a presentation that we have uploaded here, which is Harvard referencing. Yeah. <coughs> So this bit is going to be useful for you to just go through and refresh, not that something that you're not aware of, but uh -huh. it'll be useful just to refresh as you start doing your assignments at some stage uh, later in the course. Okay. Good stuff. So, <coughs> sorry, okay. just a quick one. Now, with regards to, you know, a study plan in terms of how we would go about essentially now looking at putting things together in terms of studying the units. Yeah. <laughs> so let me close all the other documents, take you back to Moodle. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in these units, you know, obviously what we would want you to do is basically start with units which are going to be slightly easier for you to complete right because they're going to be pretty much theoretical some of these units could be studied on a self-study mode as well and then you can attend live webinar where you know zoom meetings and seminars with us uh -huh. and in some cases you could also take one-on-one -on -one tutorials which are going to be unit tutorials to be able to cover the units off irrespective of what the other learners are doing on the course so because right. it'll help you set pace of the course, which is going to suit your requirement. Yeah. So let me just open one particular document, which is the summary document that I want to talk, discuss. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring out the extract of that document, which is primarily going to be the, only just the units. Okay. So here we go. Now, <clears throat> what I would do is basically start you off with a very simple unit, which is a unit uh, primarily uh, looking at, you know, health and safety. Uh, yeah. It's a unit that you'll be able to cover off pretty quickly uh, because it would require you to do an audit at your place of work in terms of, you know, basic implementation of health and safety requirements. And they would tend to be either related uh, and start you off with this particular unit, which is uh, shown in yellow. And after this, what I'm going to do is start you off on a research project because this unit takes a bit of time. You have to shortlist a topic, do a desk-based research. And then we will go into some of the units which will be 
uh, kind of following a chronological order. Things like we'll get you to finish people's management, managing communication, go into personal and professional development. And then towards the end, which is what the core of the qualification is, you want to look at facilitating change in health and social care. You want to look at working with multidisciplinary teams, leading practice and managing quality. Mm -hmm. So those are the units that we are going to take you into. There is no set specific recommended pattern to study these units. You don't need to do this in a particular order. But the idea there and thereabouts that we recommend for a study plan is to primarily look at boxing off some of the simpler units uh, first so that you know that you have them under your belt and you have completed some part of the course and then get into some of the uh, units which will need time and obviously you need to study uh, because the topics could be new and some of the things would require you to do a bit more study apart from just attending you know the live uh, you know meetings or listening into the recordings yeah is that okay yeah now last but not the least what i also want to do is so this is a plan that we are going to share with you on an email mm -hmm. and this will come to you uh, you know from marvis because okay. he will keep a track in terms of uh, what units you're studying so that you have everything available in terms sure. of tutors, resources to be able and the Zoom meeting codes to be able to attend those sessions. Okay, now, yeah. The key staff, which I just want to briefly mention uh, in terms of tutors who are going to be on this course. Yeah. So we, Shazia, we have Anjum, myself on this course, which are going to be mm -hmm. teaching different units. Apart from that, in terms of coordination, you have uh, the uh, course coordinator, which is Marvis. Yeah. And from time to time, you might get one or two emails, which will come in uh, pretty much, you know, from one of the administrators, Dania. Mm -hmm. And then okay. at some stage, when you are closer to 80% completion on your course, your assessments are on track and everything is being done. Amrita normally looks after your certification, assessment, verification, and, uh, you know, final certification with the awarding body. Okay, so that cool. you're able to receive your certificate. Now, okay. um, if you, uh, if I, if I just take one second, what I'm also going to try and show you is a copy of how the qualification uh, looks like. It is a two-page transcript, which is normally issued. Uh, the first page being your uh, diploma, and mm -hmm. the uh, second page being the transcript, which primarily shows, um, you know, the the units that you have achieved uh, and completed. Okay. So let me just see if I can bring a sample across. So that would essentially, uh, you know, be the bits that I wanted to cover, you know, in the uh, presentation and the induction today. I'm gonna to show you a level four. Let me try and see if I can sort out uh, and see if I can get you a level five, just in case one second because you're doing a level five with us. Mm -hmm. So any questions at this stage that you have? Uh, no, it's all pretty straightforward, pretty clear. Okay, good stuff. And uh, I'm just having a look, look, I think the last patch that we had um, have completed level five. So just one second, if I can find that. Okay, never mind. Let me show you. So this is how your qualification would be awarded. Okay. Uh, so it's a two page transcript. It'll say the qualification that you have completed, which is level five extended diploma in yep. management for health and social care. And yep. the second page transcript tends to be the uh, yeah. that you, in, in terms of the credits um, from the awarding organization. Great. This qualification is verifiable, uh, you know, electronically on ATHE's website. And should you or your uh -huh. employer wish to do that, that then straight away be done, you know, from the awarding body's website. Because nowadays, I think um, e-certification has become quite popular. Yeah. And what generally happens is that employers and, uh, you know, sometimes reference agencies, if they need to look at verification, if you go onto the awarding body website and they would then uh, be able to verify it pretty much uh, from there. Okay, yeah. So verify an ATHE certificate, you would fill in your details, the things like your qualification number, your certification number, Mm -hmm. And then pretty much that should be able to tell you whether the certification has been awarded or not. 
Okay, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, got that. Good stuff. So I hope this has given you a very good idea in terms of how you would look at following the course with us. Yeah. And uh, essentially the team that you need to speak to at any given point in time, we are going to add you to a WhatsApp group. Okay. Um, as I mentioned to you earlier, this is going to be for subtle, you know, communications in terms of how to get in touch. Yeah. And if I look at uh, briefly, very briefly mentioning that, so getting in touch uh, would be through the phone, which is the college switchboard. Yeah. Um, you can also get in touch with us through WhatsApp and through emails. Yeah. If you have to send emails over, I think generally they tend to be coordinator at ukversity.co.uk. And okay. for most of the tutors, it is going to be learner work, um, uh, which is going to be the shared mailbox that we have. Yeah. And this is where if we get an email, we'll pick it up and we'll respond back to you. But okay. apart from that, most emails are generally the first name followed by UK Versity. So if you write to a right, you know, okay. first name and then uh, followed by ukversity.co.uk. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Good stuff. Good. Any questions at your end? So are you feeling confident now in terms of, do you have a good understanding uh, in terms of how the course will be run, what units are involved, who are the people, and then obviously the platform that you would need to access from time to time to be able to get hold of the information? Yeah, definitely. I have used Moodle before, but it's good to just have a bit of a recap because um, it's been a little while since I've used it. So that was really helpful. Um, no, this, this all looks good. It looks pretty it was always heard straightforward, um, pretty clear. So I'm sure I'll be able to get started pretty, pretty good. Good stuff. So what we'll do is drop you an email uh, just in um, just after this session in okay. a couple of minutes, which will send you a link for the recording of the induction so yep. that you have it should you need to watch it again. And then along with that, what we are going to do is in a, um, I would say, uh, maybe late afternoonish, we will try and then send you a, a study plan email which will start you off with the next unit. And yep. that will also have the Zoom meeting codes from next week to be able to attend lectures as okay, we great. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Lovely. Sounds Lovely. good. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for attending. And, no, uh, no problem. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Perfect. Bye. Thanks so much. See you later. Bye.